Well, thank you for agreeing to this interview. Um, how about we start off by having you tell us a bit about yourself? Well, I'm Trash Queen, or TQ as people call me, and I am a loot cosplayer, a streamer, uh, a big, huge, freaking weeb nerd. Um, I just, I'm a big, I've been cosplaying for well over half a decade at this point, and I do, you know, both sexy cosplay and both, you know, fun, wholesome, cute, you know, fun. I just like cosplaying. Uh, that's really <laughs> what it is, and yeah. <laughs> I first discovered you in a tweet in which you expressed frustration with the idea that making a character stronger meant taking away their sex appeal. What was, uh, sorry, was that in response to the uh, Lola, Lola Bunny redesign for the new Space Jam by chance? Yes, that tweet in particular was definitely about Lola Bunny. It was about, uh, see, I was kind of offline most of that day because I, un I was unpacking, I just moved, and uh I was like seeing everyone get all upset about Lola Bunny and you know it's very rare for me to like kind of miss out on like what's been kind of happening but like due to like the chaos of moving and everything I was like what the hell is everyone mad about? So I look it up and I'm like Lola Bunny I'm like oh I, she looks alright I guess and then uh, I look in the articles and every single article was like she went from being sexy to strong sexy to strong and I'm like but she was already sexy and strong beforehand. You can be both. They're not, you know, two separate things, you know. You know, people are like, oh, sexy character, oh, sexy character, bad, sexy character, bad. But, oh, you know, now that they're desexualized, they are strong. And I'm like, she could be both. You can be hot and also kick some ass. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so it was less the design itself and more what people were saying about it. Definitely that. I have, I have my own qualms about the design personally myself. I, I'm very mixed on it. I am very mixed on it. Well, yeah, I guess that leads into the next one. So just looking at the difference in the designs, what did you think about the new one? <laughs> well, see, I personally like with now it's going to sound like I'm not a furry, but but uh, I the hips and everything and all that looks fine. That jersey looks Eh, I'm not a fan of the jersey myself because it's like it's super boxy on her and it kind of looks more like a men's jersey like someone actually said it really nicely it looks like they put Bugs Bunny's like jersey on her and just made her like Bugs Bunny so it's kind of it's lazy it's lazy to me and like I personally think they could have if they really wanted to get rid of her boobs for whatever reason they could have easily done a crop top there are girls both with big boobs and small boobs that wear freaking crop tops. It's not, you know, like big boobs only. It's weird. It's just, it's like, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of this new one. Yeah. Sometimes crop tops fall like right out of that range where for some people they think it's sexual other times less. So I don't know. It's kind of weird. It really, it really is not because like crop tops, honestly, first of all, cover more than a sports bra. Like I don't really personally see how they're sexy like i they, they they're nice to wear i don't mind wearing them but you know they're not like it's like you know it's not really sexy in my mind but it comes it, you know talk to the average you know person in like you know one of those schools where they have the dress code thing and it's like if they see a crop top they're like oh no you're terrible like people like i feel like that whole like weird like disdain for crop tops and stuff comes from like these like weird like dress codes personally or like this weird thing where it's like oh they were considered sexy i feel like also it's also because you know uh like many you know many years ago britney spears used to be very popular she used to wear that stuff you know like back in like the 2000s like that was considered sexy and all that and like i feel like just some people probably never got past the idea of like hey a crop top doesn't have to be sexy it could just get you look cool like you can keep the crop top design and make it look cute. Like if they kept the crop top and like made her boobs smaller, it would not look nearly as lazy and bad in my opinion. But it's like the fact that the jersey just looks so boxy and boring. I'm just like, eh, not really feeling it. Hmm. I mean, as far as crop tops go, I absolutely love them. I know maybe oh, it was same. like the '90s and the 2000s that <laughs> actually yeah, sealed like that in for me. But no, I mean that doesn't mean it has to be like distracting sexual because yeah, yeah definitely my dress codes would never allow that yeah. in school they, they didn't even like the spaghetti straps or whatever they call them <laughs> yeah i got in trouble for wearing a dress with leggings actually because they quote unquote said it was too short i'm like i'm wearing leggings underneath this what are y'all talking about but i don't know it's just so weird people are like weirdly weirded out by crop tops i'm like 
okay. I mean, are you, what, what is going on with you guys? You guys are freaking weird. Going back, what do you think about the older design? Because the older one did have a crop top, if I recall. I skewed. Like, she was not real. I mean, maybe, like, deep in my, like, subconscious, this was the first per- first character I was like, oh, maybe I'm furry for. But, like, <laughs> I thought she was cute. Like, I never was, like, really, like, man, I wanted to fuck Lola Bunny, like, when I was younger. I was never, like, a, like a, you know, like, a furry in denial or any mm. of that. Like, I don't know. There's characters where it's, like, you know, like, I definitely was like, oh, yeah, maybe I'm furry for that. But, like, I don't know. I just thought she was cute. Like... It's, I don't know. I never thought she was like super overly sexy. Like, I just thought that she was, you know, just cute. Well, I definitely feel like if they like converted Lola's design from a bunny into just a regular person, I would have been like, whoa, um, yeah. that, that would have been very powerful. Cause yeah, I thought she was adorable and whatnot. And yeah, they were going for the sexy angle, but you know, I don't think, especially in like the nineties and two thousands that like, that was like such a Oh boy, that's a problematic thing necessarily. <laughs> but now it seems yeah. like it is. Yeah, no, like it's like, so what if your kid becomes a furry as long as they're not being a little asshole online? It's like that's not the worst thing that could ever have. It's just, it's so weird, like how they're like trying to like get rid of a sexy rabbit. Like it's like, you know, if she the, like as you said, like human Lola Bunny, like you've seen the the cosplayers and stuff who do hmm. su- su- like sexy human L- Lola Bunny. Like I have a friend who does it and she looks great as Lola Bunny. And like, you know, it's like, oh yeah, you look attractive. It's like, I just always thought she was cute when I played with a, that way, Wash Space Jam. So, yeah, so you're saying, you know, sexy and strong aren't incompatible. Um, what do you think makes a character strong then? I think, you know, she has to hold her ground, you know, like don't take shit, you know, from other people. I feel she, you know, she's allowed to be cocky and stuff. Like, there's, there was a whole discourse, like, a while back saying, you know, oh, cocky, cocky, strong characters are bad. I'm like, no, you can be cocky, you can be strong, and, you know, it's not, like, bad to be cocky. I feel like, you know, don't just get, like, kind of, like, thrown in the background as a background character. Like, that's a big one where, like, sometimes they'll just go and be like, oh, yeah, this character is strong. I'm like... She's kind of did absolutely nothing. I feel like physically, you know, you have to be strong and you also need to like mentally be strong. And like, you know, you, you're allowed to have your moments of breaking down, but also, you know, you're allowed to, you know, be strong enough to handle your own ground. Like, I feel like, it, you know, you work together with others in order to like make your strengths, you know, like kind of mesh together with everyone else to go be like one big strong team, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like to me, for like strong female characters, it shouldn't always just be like the lone wolf female, you know, I only do things on my own, you know, never ask for the man's help. I feel like it kind of needs to mesh together with everybody else and you can be strong and, you know, you could be feminine, strong, feminine leaning, you know, looking very feminine, strong, or you can, you know, be like, you know, a female who, you know, is kind of more like masculine, tomboyish and badass and strong. You will kind of want to be strong enough that you're like, you know, not going to be like a Mary Sue or a Gary Sue or any, well, Gary Sue's for men, men, but like a Mary yeah. Sue or like, you know, just flat as a character, like have character development and be a strong character while also kicking ass and, you know, taking names. In contrast, what would you think makes a character sexy? Um... See, the thing is, is that I'm one of those people who thinks that both uh, physical sexiness and mental sexiness is uh, kind of like they're physically appealing. You want to you want to physically you want, you know, like a physically attractive character, you know, like for everyone, it depends. Like everyone's kind of different. Like some people like big boots, some people like small boots, some people like muscular girls, some people like, you know, bigger girls, you know, it's like what's appealing, you know, to like the character is what appealing, you know, to someone visually, but also I like characters that are like draw, like sexy and like, you know, like kind of like an emotional way where it's like, you know, they can hold their own, they can kick ass, they can, you know, be themselves, you know, not let society's bullshit get you down. And we were talking about, I believe, uh, Velvet, for example. She is a sexy character, both in terms of how she looks, but also I just find her whole revenge plot, like, and how badass she is, like, also sexy. Like, you could be both. Mm -hmm. Like, she, you know, the major from Ghost in the Shell, like, she is, her 
her outfit, you know, depending about which version you're looking at, sometimes, you know, she is very, you know, ass out, uh, you know, like the, I forget what those are called, the shirts with no straps on them, you know, like the jacket she is, you know, that sexy outfit, but also her season two outfit, you know, is a lot more covered, but also, you know, it's sexy because, you know, it just, it looks good. You just want to like have a character that looks good. Yeah, I guess so. Major normally is wearing like, like kind of like a leotard with like a vest over the top, I think normally. Yeah. Mm. Many versions of her, like there's, you know, even versions where it's like she is, you know, basically naked half the time. Like I just remember I watched the Ghost of the Shell movie and it was like I saw titties so many. I saw titties like most of the time with her. It's like she is either clothed or not clothed, but either way, no matter what, she is, you know, kicking ass. Are you? And I mean, we could take other examples of like the character is sexy. But it's like, you know, yeah, she looks hot, but also that's, you know, not what the focal point of it is. Like, I have down here, I have, like, a whole list of, like, sexy women video game anime, like, just off the top of my head. I mean, the obvious is Tifa, you know, it's mm. like, oh, yeah, you know, the one that, like, everyone all goes off of. You know, she looks attractive, but, you know, she is super kick-ass and super way better in the remake. And, you know, like, she just, she gets so much development. And I, I, I really enjoy how strong she is, but... Other ones where it's like, you know, they're like sexy. They're sexy, but you know that's not really the point. Is a two B and A two. I mean, mm. more. I'm talking more about A two in this than two B because you know, like A two. When you get up to her, her entire outfit is ripped up and all that. But you know, that is not the fucking point of her. Like her entire her entire story. That's not the fucking point. Like she is, you know, she's got her own story and like. You know, like the focal point of how much clothing she is and isn't wearing, you know, is not a big problem, you know, at all. And now for more like anime examples, uh, I've been watching Dr. Stone and uh, Mm. honestly, like a lot of the cave girls are, you know, dressed in, you know, like kind of Kohaku is kind of, you know, I would almost say kind of sexy, but not like, you know, like she's really wearing like nothing, but it's like. There's no, you know, like, oh, hey, by the way, you're dressed too sexy. Oh, hey, put on clothes or anything. No, she just literally wears, like, a dress that's, like, torn up and shit. And she, you know, fights with Senku. So, you know, she, like, looks, you know, sexy. Another one. Now, Fairy Tale is known for, like, basically, like, all the sexy designs. There are there are so many yeah. attractive women in that, in that series. And I know people love or hate Fairy Tale. It's a very love or hate thing. Um, but I'm just going to say Urza. Because Urza is, like... She's strong as fuck, but there's, there's, you know, times when, you know, she has that one outfit where it's like the bandages on her Mm -hmm. uh, chest and like, you know, like the pants and everything. She has that, you know, form. She has like a lot of sexy outfits. And I remember there's like a lot of scenes where, you know, yeah, she's dressed skimpily, but also she's, you know, super badass and she kicks ass and she's honestly like easily probably the, my favorite fairy tale character. I know it's not, that's not everybody's favorite favorite fairy tale character, but like, I really enjoyed her. And mm-hmm. the last one I kind of want to talk about is like the sexy women who are like, they know they're sexy. They know they're hot shit. But like, it's okay. They embrace the fact that they are sexy. So um, I don't know how familiar you are with the Legend of Hero series, but uh, tra- uh, Trails in the Sky, there's uh, one woman in there named Scara. They're probably saying it wrong. Scara, Shara. Um, I only played through. Gotcha. SC and uh, what Col- Trails Cold Steel 1 and 2. But, like, she is, she knows she's hot. She knows she's attractive. But, you know, she doesn't, you know, really use that, you know, as much of, like, a thing. Like, sure, she teases, you know, she gives Joshua so much shit. And she, you know, she knows what she's doing. But also, like, she's just hot. And another one. Oh, her. The, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I did play the very first Legend of Heroes, and so I know I yeah. recognize her. My favorite Legend of Heroes character is probably Sarah, the teacher. She is like, she's attractive as hell, and she is like, yes, she is a little bit flirty with Breen, yes, sir, and I know people like it all like, oh, yeah, she's a teacher and all that, but like, she does it to fuck around with him, and uh, like, she's incredibly strong when you find out her past, you know, not really gonna go say because that's kind of spoiler territory, but uh, mm. Her past is, like, basically, you know, why she's, like, such a strong mercenary, like. Mm-hmm. No, I definitely agree. Like, okay, so just looking at Sarah, like you said, you know, she's sitting there, she got, um, 
big old sword and a gun, like a long cloak with all these like belt loops and stuff flying off. She's actually not that sexual. You get a little bit of thigh and a little bit of cleavage, it looks like, but um, it fits really well and it's nice and form fitting. The colors work well right. and it's it's flowy. It almost looks like yeah. a superhero with a cape, this big yeah. long cloak. And if you look at certain other characters, like you were saying, like, like with Velvet, sure, it's very exposing or revealing, but there's an element of that it's just like, that is in itself an aesthetic of cool like when i was a kid i used to think like jetpacks were like really really cool and i'm like now i just think like oh i don't know like like you were saying like a crop top or something like i just i see that in a design i'm like right. bam that is awesome the same way that cloud holding a giant sword is just cool <laughs> do you think it's possible that trying to cover up a character or change their anatomy to be less sexy like i guess in the case of you know like lola bunny or something do you think that can actually take away their strength yeah, I feel it's I feel it's almost kind of a cop out. Like people will be like, "Oh, we're gonna go take away the boobs." That will immediately and it, it, it's me. It's just more like it looks off. It doesn't like it looks just. It doesn't look right to me. It it always just kind of gives off that energy of like, "Oh, this is norm. You can't have big boobs. You can't go and be sexy." Like. You know, I'm sitting here and it's like you think of all the big boob characters. Like if they got rid of their boobs, it would just. First of all, it would just look kind of weird because, like, that's just how they are. Like, I mean, think of, like, Lulu from Final Fantasy X with no boobs. Like, mm. that would just look fucking weird. But then again, also, another character, her boobs are out the entire freaking game, basically. And that wasn't really much of the focus. Like, I, I don't really remember anyone in the cast of Ten making boob jokes towards Lulu or anything. So it's like, you know, again, you can be sexy, you can have it all out there and still go be strong. Mm -hmm. Well, I think part of taking away those features probably bleeds into not just the phys the visual design, but also kind of the, the writing. They're, they're yeah. made to be safer, which yeah. takes away some of the charm because sometimes characters who are flawed have a lot more personality. <laughs> exactly. Which, I mean, I was talking about this earlier. Like, someone was talking about flawed characters. Like, you can have flawed protagonists. You can have, you know flawed woman, flawed men, flawed whatever the fuck you know you want. It's just like, flaws are okay to have in a character. It's all right. And it's like, my issue is that when they start taking that away, they also kind of start like Mary suing them up a little bit sometimes. I've seen that in a couple of instances. Mm. And it's just like, so you're trying to say here that like the boobs were their only personality. Like, why did you take away the personality? Like, Let's talk a little bit about you now. Um, so you said you're a lewd cosplayer. Um, you've cosplayed characters like Cami from Street Fighter, Pokemon Trainer, Tifa Lockhart, Yuffie Kisaragi, Jesse from Team Rocket, um, and a bunch of others. Um, yeah. You're no stranger to the fan service and whatnot. Um, what do you enjoy about cosplay? Like, just putting stuff together, like being creative with it. There's always like... I kind of like it because there's like usually if I cosplay a character, they mean something to me and are relatable in some sort of way. Like the relation can be, you know, super like, you know, oh yeah, they, I definitely like relate to this character. Like Chie, for example, like Chie, I, as soon as I saw her, literally five seconds later, I was like, I need to cosplay her because <laughs> she was this, you know, strong, badass, you know, like she was so relatable. And it's like, so why do you specifically do lewd cosplay? Because I one day decided to do it and I found out it was a lot of fun and I started to want to do more of it. And I feel honestly, it gives you more creativity in a way because it's like, you know, yeah, you can do the normal, normal stuff too, but also you can do the fun little sexy stuff. And it's like, most of my Patreon shoots are not just, you know, like just the sexy stuff. It's like, you know, the fun stuff, you know, like portraying the character, like it's just a fun way to kind of like, you know, own your sexuality. And at the same time, I also, I lift. So I kind of like to go through the pictures as well to kind of also go see like the bodily gains too. Like, it's like, I'll look at old like cosplay pictures of myself from like before 2018. I'm like, God, I was like so small and out of shape back then. And now I look at myself, I'm like, man, I look so much better. Like, it's also, you know, I kind of do that as well as, like, kind of, like, a fitness thing, where it's, like, I, I like doing, like, the fitness to strong characters because, you know, I work out and I'm strong. Mm -hmm. So doing those cosplays in a way is, you know, self-love and self-improvement? It is self-love and a form of self-improvement. <laughs>
I know it's not for everybody, but it definitely, you know, is a form of, you know, self-love for myself. And it's kind of cool to go see all the gains. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as a woman, how do you feel about anime being sexualized in general? See, I love it because usually the fan service is like, on the one hand, some of the fan service is really, you know, kind of like, ah, that's kind of funny, that's really tropey, but like some of the other stuff is like, you know, oh, hey, that's a creative way to do it. Like, I love it. I love it. It's like, I know it's not for everybody. I know it's not everyone's thing, but every time I, I enjoy it, it is entertaining to me. It's entertainment. Like, entertainment does not have to be something serious. It could be a dumb fan service anime. It's why what it's why I have such a soft spot for that uh that isekai, the do you love your mom and your two hit multi-target attacks. It is, you know, <laughs> it's fan service. It's kind of silly and tropey, but also wholesome. And it's like that's why I love those types of anime. Like, yes, it's silly and tropey, yes, it's wholesome, but also I, I it's I got a soft spot for it because it's just an escape it's a nice little way to kind of unwind and i watch anime before bed so i like watching stuff that's entertaining to me and i think i noticed this in one of your streams that you had like a background of like high school of the dead are you familiar with that then yeah oh yeah i have a seiko wall scroll i don't think it's up in this room uh no this room is all like the kind of more like safe work stuff worst thing i have in here is like some like yaoi stuff but that's about it <laughs> uh, oh and i have a 2b and a 9s in here that's like they have, they're in their underwear and that's about it this is my like streaming room so no my our bedroom has like so many titties up already no i have so many sexy posters and everything we just we haven't we haven't put everything up like there's a lot of stuff and it's like I buy it because, like, oh, I like the girl. It's really attractive. And, you know, it's like, I love, you know, loot fan art and all of that. Like, I have, like, Zelda's ass on my laptop as, like, a laptop sticker because it's just a really nice picture of Zelda's butt. <laughs> <laughs> but you view, like, a lot of the anime antics as kind of part of their own world, right? Yeah. You know, uh, fiction and reality are two very fucking different things. Uh, regardless of what the internet likes to go say, fiction and reality are not the same thing. Now, can fiction influence reality? Yeah, in some ways. Like, you know, you might, you know, get inspired by something because you watch something. But, like, the way that people all think, oh, because, you know, you like sexy anime, that means you're going to go be a fucking weirdo to people in real life. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. Like, dude, I, I, I... I keep like all I keep the fucking like, ooh, that's a sexy girl, like to strip you know, to anime. And it's like if my friend, you know, like puts on an outfit and she looks good, I'll be like, hey, you look great. But you know, like that's very different from, you know, having a sexy poster of Seiko in your house. Like I guess from the other side, like playing a bit of devil, uh, devil's advocate, do you understand why other women or just people in general would be uncomfortable by sexualizing anime characters? Honestly, I feel a lot of it is a little bit of, like, see, I, I grew up with, like, such a prude family and all of that stuff, so it's like, you know, when I kind of discovered, you know, like, sexy characters, they go be sexy, it's like, you know, oh, yeah, that's kind of cool, I always liked that, and it's like, I mean, it's like, as, as I said on a thread on Twitter a few days ago. It's like, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry that makes you uncomfortable, but uh, don't make me feel bad for liking anime tits. Um, that's really the best way I could go talk about it. It's like, don't make me feel bad for, you know, having a good time uh, when I am not harming anybody or harming you. Like, you know, someone's like, hey, don't go, you know, send that to me. I'd just be like, okay, brush it off, move the fuck on. Like, that's really what I would do. But, you know, it's like, you know, most, I don't know, I talk to too many people who are just cool with, with sending anime titties and usually send me anime titties, so I just some like, whatever, and you know, usually I, I keep the people that are, you know, cool with that sort of stuff, but cool with, you know, just like, talking about anime titties, you know, usually a lot closer than the people who are like, oh, don't show that, like, I have a friend who's like, kind of like that, and it's like, I just, I basically just respect her boundaries and everything, and I just respect, you know, it, it's like, it's just a respect thing, like, I won't bother you with it, but also don't be an antagonistic little shit to me if I like something. If you don't like it, don't look at it. Literally, that fucking simple. Like, I'm not a fan of, you know, like, like it's like I don't go out of my way to go, you know, look for, you know, stuff that I don't like. Like, it's just, it's, it, a lot of it is like, if you're uncomfortable with it, like, I understand, like, okay, that's your thing. All right. 
but also don't go out of your way to go find it. Like mute, block, move on with your life if that's really bothering you. Have you ever come across something in anime or maybe part of the fandom regarding that that's made you personally uncomfortable? Sexuality wise, no, but uh, I, I've I've seen uh, no. The one thing that's ever made me like physically like uncomfortable is like a fetish. Like it was it was it was in a visual novel, <laughs> yeah. and uh, we we played it without the pat. We played it with the patch on that takes out that basically uh, shows everything, and uh, it got into uh, kind. Of, I, I'm just gonna go be right now. Uh, fetish warning for everybody. Uh, scat. And curry, and that was the only time. That was like literally one of like the two times I ever physically felt uncomfortable in any sort of that. But that's because it was disgusting. Like I just get disgust disgusted by that stuff. But like it was more of like a disgusting uncomfortable. As for a sexuality uncomfortable, nah. Were you talking about Euphoria by chance? Uh, no, it was. Ta- uh. I was talking about Starless, but Euphoria also has that type of scene. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, honestly, with that, with visual novels, that sort of thing, if it's not, like, for you, do yourself a favor. I like, you know, it's like, it's like, yeah, I understand why people don't want that on, trust me. But also, I'm one of those people who likes to go see how fucking, like, out there this shit gets. So, like, I'll go turn it on. Yeah, especially with, like, manga. Sometimes I'll hear, like, there's a manga that's, like, really messed up. And I'm, like, kind of just so curious. I have to look it up. It, I don't yeah. even necessarily know if I like it, but I still read it. Th- that's kind of what I got into with Shield Hero. Uh, not Shield Hero, sorry. A redo of Healer before it was uh-huh. even out. And I'm, like, I just want to watch it to see how messed up it gets. <laughs> they honestly, they went a lot They went a lot more hardcore with uh, a few scenes in the anime than they did with the manga. Like, both in, like, uh it's a fucked up scene sort of way. Like the, the scene uh, in episode two is a lot more fucked up in the anime than it is in the manga, but also like in terms of the sexy content, the uh, scene with uh, him, Freya and the uh, Setsuna, like the first like FFM threesome that they have, like that one was actually like extended a lot more. It's only like one page in the actual manga. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like they they had to make sure that every episode had something. (laughs) It's so funny. Every time it's like you, you sit there and it's like part of the fun of that anime is like waiting for when the scene's going to happen because you know it's coming. Cool. So the next thing we actually have covered a lot of ground. We can probably skip oh, a little yeah. bit of it, but it has to do with, you know, the Pyra and Mithra from Smash getting. Um, first of all, they were censored for the game. I can understand that for the most part because the Japanese. Well, I, I guess I kind of don't in some ways like it, it kind of has to do with like what parts you think are sexual and which ones aren't because in this case, you know, they're designed to be attractive overall, but what parts do you think about their designs are specifically meant to attract people because they, they had, a, they made you, sorry, they made a major point of censoring the thighs by giving them stockings instead. And the irony is that the, they're now, they now have a better design uh, in some ways. Like honestly, stockings Mithra looks better. Uh, like it's it's so funny because they're like oh we need to go censor it like i mean i guess maybe they were worried about uh the panty shots like i feel like that's probably why the censorship honestly happened because they were worried about mm. panty shots but even though that makes kind of very little sense because isn't like pirates like thing like a skirt or is it just a skirt i don't know like i mean they're attractive characters first of all because the colors are just they, they have really gorgeous colors like it's just it's just really nice to look at uh, from like not even like just like oh titty standpoint oh they just have really nice colors and I mean I would say probably they really just put those on just to kind of get rid of the panty shots but I don't think that fully gets rid of anything and just ends up with like more like sexy thigh and butt shots because now their asses are more defined I think <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, mean, I feel it, like there's this weird censorship that they put out there for I don't know it was just weird it's really weird what people think is sexy and what's not because like one of my favorites is the you know the the zero suit samus specifically like the sports bra like costume from it the one from metroid uh metroid fusion yeah yeah (laughs) and i'm like how does this get through and then this doesn't and it's sort of like maybe i'm just lucky that the things i like aren't considered as sexual but it's kind of weird how like i don't know like what what things do you think people are looking for when they're thinking it's, of sexy. 
it is very odd what Smash deems uh, what is sexy and what is not sexy. Like, you've got Bayonetta, which to my knowledge, she hasn't really been that censored. Like, I don't know if they ever censored her, like, attacks where they put on, like, something underneath when she does a hair thing. But, mm. like, they, you got Bayonetta, who is, you know kind of already very sexy out there and you know she had like the naked outfits and everything but they got pyro me through got censored they got you know as you said the training outfit which you know doesn't have any censorship whatsoever and then you got i'm trying to think if there's any other like sexy girls there's a lot of sexy girls in smash you know they got zelda's <laughs> dump truck ass that everybody found i don't think they were they're necessarily not really in my opinion too sexy for smash or anything but it's like it's like trying to get Ivy from Soul Calibur into Smash. That's just, that's just probably not going to work. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's <laughs> like, interesting because, yeah, like, Byleth has, like, the little tiny, like, midriff window thing, the female version. Yeah. And people were like, but that's, that's sexist because the guy doesn't have the same thing, I guess. I'm like, but literally that little cutout is one of the reasons I bought the game. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm just, that's the kind of thing I find attractive and interesting. See, I, if Byleth had short, if they Byleth had short hair for the girl and long hair for the guy, it would look so much better. Because I saw, I saw a design where they basically edited the hair styles for each one, and it just looked so much better. Like I personally love Byleth's design, but I know people like were whining about it. And I'm like, it really is not that bad, guys. Like, really, is not that bad. And it's like, yeah, it's different from the boys, but I would much prefer a different design for the girl than like it being the same fucking thing. Cause I'm sorry if she was wearing what male Byleth was wearing, it would look really weird. It just wouldn't look as good. I, I don't know. I like her design. I, I guess it kind of leads into the next question is, do you think as far as like kids are concerned for something that should be rated E for everyone, certain things that you don't think kids should see as far as women's bodies or guys bodies for that matter too. Honestly, if you can see it at a beach, it should be allowed in the game. Going to the whole swimsuit thing, regarding conventions, now I think this was something that was starting to pop up like right before the pandemic hit. You know, now we don't go to conventions. I can't <laughs> wait to actually go to one again and meet all my what friends again. But What a mood. <laughs> yeah, so before that happened, um, at least the one that, like we're talking in Colorado, there's like non-descon, that's a huge one, and Colorado Anime Fest. Those two were starting to implement harsher rules, I think, on cosplay regarding like okay so you could do like basic swimsuit but if you had to lift it up to do like an under boob type thing that was forbidden and if you're a guy you're not allowed to show your nipples that was the new thing that they were trying to do so you had to wear like a vest or tape it so that it wouldn't fly open enough so all the people doing like luffy from like one piece what do you think about those is there a point where you think uh... that's getting kind of ridiculous well, there's multiple reasons why I'm not a big fan of those rules. For starters, cons are not consistent with it. Case in point. So, uh, story time, everybody. Uh, it was, I believe, 2015 at a con. Um, I was dressed in, like, some costume. And I was a, it was a little bit of cheek. It was nothing too terrible. Uh, no, it wasn't even cheek. It was a little bit of cleavage. It was... Uh, a rule 63 of a uh, naked snake from MGS3. I had staff come up to me, tell me, hey, you need to go change. You need to get this out. This is wrong. And their reasoning was because the top was more of a bra top than a swimsuit top. And I was like, that's fucking stupid. Another buddy of mine, she is a uh, very, she's, she's well endowed. She's a little more well endowed than I am. And uh, she was cosplaying Lucy from Elfin Lied. She as well got uh, told, hey, you need to go change. Now, there were girls there with thongs on, their asses hanging out. Con people didn't do a goddamn thing about it until I made a huge stink in front of their people and being like, hey, well, you can be fucking consistent. I, cu I cussed out them. And uh, there was a lot of shit that fucking happened that weekend at that con. There's a reason why mm. I haven't been back in, in over six years. And I don't know, ta guy taping his nipples, it's just like... Oh no, nipples! It's it's just kind of silly to me. Like, what 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 is the problem with that sort of stuff? It's just kind of fucking weird. It's a weird sexism, and don't like single out one person. Single, you know, like if you're gonna go and put in a rule, it's for everybody, or if it's for, or it's for nobody. Like that's just that's just how it's got to be. Hmm. Now, how do you feel about the uh, whole ahegao clothes? 
Dude, I love that shit. I I have so much <laughs> hangout shirts. Okay, so no, I actually I have it. So oh god, I have a hangout crop top, a hangout skirt, a hangout two hangout shirts. One of them is a bar a hangout shirt a buddy of mine made for me because he like was doing a hangout clothing and we were jokingly saying we were gonna go and like wear a hangout outfits together and it never happened because uh, we ended up not really getting a chance to do it to go and hang out together. I have like a hangout underwear. Uh, I used to have a hangout shower curtain, but I got rid of that because uh, it was kind of nasty. I had a hangout blanket, a hangout pillows. It's like I like it, but also I never leave. I you know never leave my house, and like I usually just wear it around the house when I'm like working and shit or like streaming. Like I love it. I personally love the damn stuff, and I know cons are trying to ban it, mm. and it's like okay, so uh yeah, a uh, funny story. Lots of people that are wearing it out in the open in public are definitely not adults wearing it. I uh Trash King and I were at a 7-Eleven uh and we were walking out and there were three kids, like I'm talking 15 year olds, like 14, 15, <laughs> all of them wearing a hangout clothing. And like <laughs> me and Trash Kid got such a good laugh out of that. He's like, and, and like we were just dying because it's like, I don't really see it from like adults IRL. It's like, I always see it like the little like 15 year olds wearing it. It's like, I see it at cons, you know, like, yeah, sure. I don't have a problem with it. Like, I've had people that are not weebs look at that shirt and say, oh, cool faces. They don't see anything sexual with it. Like, <laughs> okay, so uh, my father-in-law's girlfriend, fiance, whatever she is, uh, she came over and she was like, she thought they were like something else. She thought they were like dolls. And like, another person thought they were like faces and stuff. Like, they don't, it doesn't really register as a sexual thing to the average, like, non weeb person like that's just what's so weird about it it's like i mean i personally wouldn't you know care if i saw it i don't know i think banning stuff is just kind of dumb i i just i'm not a fan of banning stuff and like i don't think the average person is really gonna know what the fuck it is like usually i i i've I've never had anybody like be like, oh my god, gross. That's literally porn or anything. Like that was like a normal person. Like they all just thought it was faces. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's literally what everyone says online, and that's what made it a bit yeah. tricky. It's like, but you know what? If you're a kid and you're old enough to know what it is, you're kind of old enough to see it. Like I don't know, to a exactly. certain extent. <laughs> like I, I, at this point, it's like it's more when you see the kids have it and it's like oh how did you find out about that one kid uh aren't you it's it's just it's like you know at, at this point it's like i feel like it's just to kind of go make these like i'm uncomfortable sort of people like pet pet them on the shoulder or pat them on the ass basically okay so let's see here um one thing that's kind of transitioning back to the smash stuff but not necessarily about smash specifically but just, I guess, one of the reasons people were in such a fury about the whole Pyramithra thing is, I guess, because of real-world sexism that they were experiencing at Smash tournaments. Where, like, I don't know, maybe guys are being all sleazy and catcalling women, or... I don't know, maybe just being rude to them as competitors. Um, do you think that that's a justifiable reason to have an issue with the characters that are being introduced in Smash? Not at all. No, it's not. Because, first of all... Fiction and reality are two different things. If you got, you know, people being assholes at Smash tournaments, that is a Smash tournament problem. I don't think, you know, banning Pyra and Mithra is going to fix uh, guys being assholes to chicks at tournaments. Like, that's my whole issue with the whole Smash thing, is that they are uh, literally trying to ban stuff and, like, doing everything but fixing the problem of predators in the community. And, like... From what I heard from a lot of, like, the fe former female Smash players who, you know, have left the community, it was never about the characters. It was never about the sexy designs. It was about people treating them like shit if they won a fucking tournament. And it's like, you know, that's not okay. Like, mm -hmm. if, a, if, you know, a woman beats your ass at Smash, like, just take the fucking L and don't give me a fucking dick. Like, that's really, how, that's really what it is. And, like, don't, like, put a woman down just because she's a chick playing fighting games. That's so fucking stupid. There's a big pedo problem in the smash community both with you know guys and you know that one chick where you know you, the, the fucking video that was disgusting uh actually i'm not like, sure of this one what was that uh the i don't know if you remember it, his i know the guy's name was puppe p-u-p-p-e-h he's like 15 i think 
mm. or some shit. And there's a grown ass woman like grooming him in like the tournament area. And it was really fucking creepy. And it, made, mm. it was like, I was like, this is disgusting. What the fuck, dude? And like, it's even worse because like, Pape is like one of those like, kids that definitely like looks much younger than he than 15 so it literally looks like she's like sexually soliciting like a 10 year old and it's really fucking gross like they are taking the sexy characters and using it as a scapegoat instead of handling the real problem with the smash community that's their issue is that if the smash community wants to fix itself they need to fix those problems and everything and it's like I don't know. It's super fucking weird that, you know, but you know, then you also have like, for example, the guy that was like the head of Evo who was like trying to ban like sexy. It was like something sexy. I think he was trying to ban like dead or alive or some shit mm -hmm. like the court values guy. And it turns out he's like a piece of shit as well. And like piece of shit predator. It's like, you know, like it doesn't really show a, it, you know, it's like you guys are going after the wrong things and it's kind of projections. There's something bigger going on there. And it's like, you know, if I'm sorry, if you are uncomfortable by Pyra and Mithra and someone doing a mod that's not even going to be allowed in tournaments that most of us shouldn't even be downloading anyways, because it's probably going to it's probably going to brick your fucking switch. Um, like if that's your problem, if you are uncomfortable by that, you have your problems, you have your priorities mi mixed up. You really do. Kind of going on to what you had mentioned, you know, obviously, you know. 15 year old being groomed looks even younger kind of stuff. But like, how do you compare that to uh Lolicon? Uh, fiction, reality, two very different things. Like I, I don't under, I don't really get the whole lolly appeal like, and, but it's also like, you know, at the same time, if you're keeping it fictional, I personally don't see the problem. But then also the problem with the whole like freaking thing about going after lolly cons is that they're starting to call everything a lolly. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I had like, somebody I saying, but like, how do you find Matori Yuko hot? She's 17. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I don't necessarily see 17 year old. I look, I look at a drawing. I see it as a drawing most of the time. It's 17 for, she's been 17 for what, like seven, eight years at this point. It's like, you know, when people are trying, okay, oh man, so I, like, with people, with the whole Yuffie debacle, because people hmm. were trying to be like, remember, Yuffie is 16, ah. sort of dumb shit, and, uh, like, I literally, well, see, Trash King found it for me, because he was an Encyclopedia Dramatica thing, I was like, isn't there porn that's like, and I was like, Encyclopedia Dramatica, it was like one of the first images on Rule 34, he found it for me, and like, I was like, please share this and be like, this is older than everybody else. And I actually got blocked for that from like a four. No, no, no. It's so funny because I got blocked by a former mutual who was liking my crisis core Tifa pictures literally the day before. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, Yuffie's been 16 for what now? Like 20, 23 years. And uh, technically she's like almost 30 years old as of this year because she was born in 1991. Like you're gonna play these mental gymnastics that she's, you know, 16 and like all that sort of shit. Like, no, like she's a fucking drawing. All right, so talking about anime characters, a lot of times they're idealized to be very beautiful to some person's mentality. Maybe that's like ultra thick or ultra slim or whatever, and people just have these particular things. And some people get uncomfortable, obviously, because a lot of those aren't easily attainable or realistic. I guess you, as somebody who like cosplays and stuff like that, how do you do you tie your own self esteem to like anime characters, or do you like rein it in to realize that this is just like ridiculous, like high school, of the dead, like nobody really looks like that, but you don't. Yeah, yeah they're very, they are very, very, very different things. Like a real life person, unless if you are getting a shitload of surgeries, you're not going to look like an anime character. Like there are a couple of like big name cosplayers who kind of, you know, go for the anime, like ideal. And, you know, personally, it ain't my fucking thing. I like seeing the human, the realistic, you know, the way that a human looks, because a human looks very different from an anime character, not just, you know, because of the eyes and everything, but like, you know, the face and like, you know, it's unless if you are blessed with like God tier genes, you're not going to look, you know, like some, like, like, you know, some big busty anime character or 100% perfectly like an anime character, you know, that's okay. Cause we're all human and those are our fucking flaws. And 
I don't think you should be discomforted because they are literally designed as an ideal. I don't think you should personally feel bad if someone finds 2D attractive, like, or finds 2D better than 3D. Like, I, I don't know. I don't personally find, like, a problem with that. Like, you know, obviously you could take, you know, elements of fiction and, like, you know, have it influence parts of your reality. I mean, obviously fiction and reality are two very different things. You can, like, you know, certain things influence it. Like, you know, it's like, if I see, you know, like, I, I remember, like, part of the reason why, like, I really started kind of getting into lifting is because I saw all of these like really attractive anime girls that were muscular and, you know, video game girls are muscular and, you know, it kind of became almost like kind of a, an influence where it's like, I kind of want to start, you know, like working out and getting more defined muscles. And, you know, it's like, obviously I'm not going to look like, you know, like a Noe from uh Dora Hidoro, that really big, you know, muscular chick. But, oh, you know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> I've always I find that attractive and you know I like you know how influential you know I like strong this I like you know characters that look strong and like but honestly you know it's like when it comes to like physical you know like IRL sort of people there are plenty of female power lifters that you know have a body type where it's like oh yeah I kind of want to look like that you know anime a lot of times is part of it's like fan service it might be like kind of I don't know, like molesty, like, like dare I say rapey in some ways. And sometimes it's written off as like a joke or things like that. Or it's kind of funny, like Miroku grabbing Sango's ass all the time and stuff. It's like those sorts of things. Do you think that a work of fiction, like an anime needs to specifically represent these types of moments in ways that say, no, this is wrong. You have to like reinforce that through the narrative. It's just, they have to, people have to understand that, you know, we find stuff that isn't necessarily okay to do to others entertaining doesn't mean we're going to go out and do it. What's your favorite anime and what's your favorite game or just one of them and why? Oh God, who favorite anime? I, I, I am still super partial to Full Metal Alchemist after all of these years. It's literally one of the first animes I have watched and it's literally how I met Trash King. So, uh, Full Metal Alchemist probably still sits there at the top position. Now, for favorite game, uh, there's two. There's two because I love them both, and they are both uh, kind of two very different things. The first one is Tales of the Abyss, because uh, it, it is one of those RPGs that I just loved it from beginning to end. I know it's got battle system issues, but as a Tales of game, it is so solid. All the characters... Here's the thing, all the characters are assholes in that game. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know, like, I, I'm kind of sometimes preferential to kind of the asshole piece of shit characters, or like, kind of, you know, like, kind of dicks to other people, so it's like, you know, like, I don't know, there's just about that dynamic of characters, and how Luke gets called out for his shit, and like, you know, Luke is a little fucking asshole prince, oh, and you know, he's a, he's a little brat, but like, you know, the character growth of that guy is like some of the best I've seen, you know? Oh yeah, RPG. no, he has to, he has to go from absolute rock bottom and then go back up. Yeah, yeah no, cause he fucked up. He majorly fucked up. And like the realization that you fucked up and your gr character growth from learning how to fuck up is like, it's just such a good story. Like I was talking about with Trash King, I'm like, all right, whenever we get this RCA cable in or the RCA connector uh, for to HDMI, we definitely, that's one of our things we want to play together because we both love that game. The other game that is probably up there is my favorite game because I, it's like I only played this kind of recently, but it's like, it's a beautiful game and a beautiful story that is very hard to make sense of. Uh, Xenogears. Oh, uh, my favorite yeah. game of all time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So you understand. You understand this. No. It. it okay. So first time I played it, I was kind of in on it because I was kind of like, uh, I don't. I wasn't really in the mood to go play it. Then I played it again, and like, there's just something about the buildup of everything that happens up to the end of disc one that's just like, damn. Like, it's just such a good like, you know, like it does like the typical RPG stuff. And, you know, it's your typical story. But then like disc two, it's like, oh, we're just gonna fuck everything up and like drop all these bombs on you. And it's mm. like. It's really good, and I'm like, oh, it's just so good. It's so good. Mm -hmm. For for Xenogears, for me, it, a lot of it's atmosphere. I think yeah. I was mesmerized by the final dungeon because it's almost oh. like entirely pitch black, and you're just going through these lonely corridors, and it just yeah. felt so desolate and creepy. And then you you go into like those animated cutscenes. Like even if they were to do a remake today, 
it wouldn't look like that anymore, which is kind of sad. Yeah. That, like 90s style animation, maybe like Evangelion or like, what is it, like blue gender kind of like yeah. eerie animation that they had. It yeah. was just very dark and it just created this wild atmosphere. And then to top that off, like the ending song, like after that whole journey, just it melts me. Oh, man. But then um, as far as like Tales of the Abyss, yeah, that one was very special to me too because that was it was a good moment in time where both my brother and my wife were all able to play it together. So that is it for all of my questions. Um, I appreciate your perspective, um, especially as a woman who seems to appreciate a lot of the stuff that's kind of being demonized a lot these days. And it's, it's frustrating because I want to show that there are other perspectives. <laughs> well, you want to show that, Hey, you know, there isn't just a woman hate this, but you know, there's actually a woman who are like, I enjoy this still, please keep it. Mm. And I'm very much interested in the, the kind of content that you're putting out. So if you want to take the chance now, go ahead and uh, plug yourself. How can the people who are watching okay. this video keep up with you? Well, uh, the easiest way to keep up with me is on Twitter. Uh, I, we have Trash, King and, Trash Queen and King, which is uh, my at is at Trash Queen underscore zero one. That's where I post most of my stuff. I also have a link tree in there that has like everything. Um, I've got an Instagram. I don't, I really need to start using this more. And it's also a trash queen, but it's a uh, trash underscore queen zero one. Uh, the biggest one is probably uh, next to like the, well, I'll get to the not safe work stuff in a second, but uh, is YouTube. I, me and my husband both do YouTube together, uh, trash queen and King stream. And uh, we're like, you know, we're trying to get get this growth and everything going. We do a lot of different games. Right now, we're doing uh, Persona 5 Strikers, Final Fantasy VIII, and uh, at some point, he will be getting back to finish up Ryza. He just needs to grind in it because that game is very uh, oh, yeah. item grindy. That game is incredibly item grindy, and I'm uh, I'm on somewhere in uh, Disc 3 and Final Fantasy VIII, and we're playing through Strikers. We're a little bit behind everybody else, but due to, like, moving and everything. And then... For those who want the more not safe for work content, I do Patreon and OnlyFans. So uh, Patreon is Trash ki trash Queen and King, and uh, there we do a few sets a month. Uh, one little tiny set, two normal size sets, and it's basically different characters. Uh, both myself and he d and my husband does some too. Uh, but yeah, we do that. And then there's OnlyFans, which I, I just kind of got off the ground. I did it because my friend was like, hey, you should do OnlyFans. So I did it. And that's a uh, trash queen. That's literally, it's just, cra it's just trash queen. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, I believe. And we also have a Discord as well. Uh, that is the trash queen and king's loot and ship post kingdom. Uh, we... <laughs> basically keep up our streams and everything there and uh try go in there try to make sure my uh members are getting along for the most part uh and yeah well i wish you luck on that and again thank <laughs> you so much yeah no problem thanks for watching if you enjoy this channel help me beat the algorithm by liking commenting and sharing the video subscribing to otaku daikun and most of all Smashing that notification bell so you don't miss out on all of my anime discussion, lore, or Let's Play content. If you want to support me directly, there are now three ways that all provide the same benefits. You can click join here on YouTube, or join Patreon or Subscribestar for access to exclusive vids and early access. As always, celebrate your fandom!